Physics is the science of daily life. It describes the motion of daily objects as well as interactions between them. But not every topic in physics is clear. Let's take, for example, throwing a ball up into the air. So it seems as though you can easily describe the motion of the ball, but there are crucial facts hidden in this model. Okay. Let's analyze the motion of the ball. How does the ball move in relation to position versus time? So let's put position on our y-axis and time on our x-axis. So if it goes up, it goes until it hits a maximum height and then falls back down. So let's look at the hidden truths. What does the slope of the position versus time graph represent? So it re represents velocity. So let's put velocity on our y and time on our x. So the slope is decreasing decreasing, decreasing, decreasing as it approaches zero, a slope of zero, which is a velocity of zero, so decreasing until it hits zero, and then it falls back down and the velocity increases. So the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration. So let's put acceleration on our y and time on our x. Okay, so let's look at a velocity time graph. So looking at the slope, it's actually constant and negative. So when drawing your acceleration time graph, you have a constant negative slope. Just a quick recap. Let's look at all the slopes. So the slope of a position time graph is velocity slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration. So what is the slope of an acceleration time graph? It's something known as jerk. So what is jerk? Jerk is the change in acceleration over a change in time. Since acceleration is constant, the slope will be zero. So in this case, your jerk would be zero. So now, let's see if we can create a jerk in real life. So to test jerk, I have a computer connected to a Lab Pro, a track mounted with a motion detector, and a low friction car loaded with a spring. So in the experiment, the car will be launched by a spring. And after collecting data, we will analyze the motion for jerk. Here is the data. So after the spring was released, there was a change in acceleration. After, and afterwards, it remained relatively constant. And then until it hit the book at that point. So let's take a closer look at the spring release. So the acceleration changed linearly. So if we find the slope of the line, we will find a value for jerk. So, which in this case is negative 42.41 meters per second cubed. So now we know that jerk is a change in acceleration over the change in time. But we can go further. So the slope of jerk is snap, which is a change in jerk or a change in time. We can also get the slope of snap, which is crackle, a change in snap over a change in time. We can even take the slope of crackle, which gives us pop, which is a change in crackle over a change in time. In short, from jerk we hit snap, crackle, and then pop. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Anyways, when the ball was thrown up into the air, there was a jerk of zero. So I will use calc to explain why this occurs. So let's say the motion of an object is represented by the function change in x equals t to the fourth minus 3t cubed plus 7t squared plus 8t plus 9. So when we take the derivative, we get 
derivative of the change in x over dt, which is also known as velocity, is equal to 4t cubed minus 9t squared plus 14t plus 8. And your constant goes away. So next, we take the derivative of v, or velocity. dv dt equals acceleration, which equals 12t squared minus 18t plus 14. And then a constant goes away. Next, we take the deriv derivative of acceleration. So dA dt equals jerk, which equals 24t minus 18, and the constant goes away. Next, we take the derivative of jerk. So dj over dt equals snap, which equals 24. So the constant goes away. So now, we finally take the derivative of snap over dt, which equals crackle, and then your constant goes away, and you're just left with 0, which also relates back to our previous value of 0. There is a rule in calculus. If you continuously take the derivative of a polynomial, eventually you will reach a value of 0. So because of this rule, most of the time, the higher order derivatives of acceleration have a value of 0. Let's go back to our acceleration time graph from the ball example. A, acceleration time. Remember that the acceleration was constant. So we can take a look at this in terms of forces. So Newton's second law, F equals ma. So since our acceleration was constant, our force will also have to be constant. So what is the relationship between force and constant jerk. So constant jerk, as we did in our experiment with jerk, was a linear acceleration. So with a linear acceleration, you would need a linear force applied. So a constant snap, let's try that. Constant snap would be a quadratic force applied, or a quadratic acceleration. So we could expand this a little bit further. A constant crackle. That would be a cubic force applied. And now, a constant pop. In order to achieve this, you would have to have a quartic force applied. How would you even achieve this? So right now, it doesn't even exist. But this phenomena can be explained in science fiction, such as a jump into hyperspace. Prepare to jump into hyperspace on my mark. All right, stand by. So, why are the higher order derivatives of acceleration important? These derivatives can portray a world beyond what we can perceive to explain how what we see isn't necessarily as perfect as what we view them to be. Thanks for watching.